So welcome to uh, another episode of Bald and Balding. We are here at the Cincinnati Comic Expo with Cincinnati native Kevin Mooring, who is a horror author. I am. Morning. Morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Um, hey, how did you get into, to me as a, as a fantasy author, yeah. I guess it's not a big leap from fantasy to horror, but how do you, does one get into horror writing? Um, I was always a fan of horror movies, slashers. Um, you know, my dad made me watch all the Friday the 13th movies. Your dad made you watch y them. Yes, as, as a seven-year-old on the couch, terrified. I still have nightmares. But Parenting win. Yes, parenting win 101. It's good Catholic upbringing up here uh, in Cincinnati. Boomer. <laughs> so I, I just leaped from that to I've always been a fan of that genre. So it's really easy for me to do that. So um, when did you when did you start? When did you um, publish your first book? I, I published my first book seven years ago. I used to be a um, over the road truck driver, so I was gone a lot. I was gone a month at a time, and ha I would work ten hours a day. I would only sleep six or seven hours a day. So that left me seven hours to do nothing. Uh, so I started writing uh, as a way to pass the time. It was a hobby for me. I didn't really take it seriously, and that was six books ago now. So it's turned into a little more than a hobby, but. It's still just fun for me. I don't take anything too serious. So. You still drive? I do not. I, I work for a trucking company. I no longer drive. I'm home. So the, the newest one took me about three years to put out because I don't have. I didn't have that block of time that oh. I was used to. So I have you know wife and kids and family obligations. So it took a little longer to get out that, that last one out. Did, did any of your experiences as a trucker uh, work their way into any of your stories? A lot of it did. Um, more about location. My my thriller series is set in uh, Oregon. So as a driver, I, I, that's the only chance I had to experience Oregon and, the, and you know, the hills and the beauty that is the Pacific Northwest. So that whole series is set in a fake town in Oregon. Um, other than that, I just took out a lot of road rage and uh, killed people in, on paper as opposed to doing it on the road. So as a driver on the road, thank you very much for doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are these all the a part of the same thing or is each one of your books? An each, each one of these are, are all standalone. Um, this was my very first release. I literally wrote it on a $99 Amazon tablet that had a keyboard, and I was on the road, and that's how I did it. Um, this one is uh, all of my friends. They always want to be in a story, right? Your friends want to be in a book. So I wrote a short story for each of them, uh, did very bad things to each of them, and that this, that's this book. It's a collection of short stories all about my friends. Uh, this is the newest one. Um, it's uh, four high school kids decide instead of going on their regular senior trip, they want to go to explore an abandoned haunted hospital. Uh, in southeast Ohio so that's what they do and they go and find the spirits and this is my first dive into like paranormal so uh, I struggle with that because I'm not a firm believer like my wife is but I wrote that paranormal that one just came out um Tuesday September 19th so does your wife help you with that kind of thing when you get she to does a, a lot of editing yeah she gives me so so this like I told you it took me three years and I thought it was done and I gave it to her to read she's my as Stephen King would say my intended reader um so I gave it to her and she said it's not done I tore it all apart, redid it all, another year and a half in the works. And yeah, so she, she gets to read it before anybody else does. Okay, and I see over here you have uh, Graham Park, Evil in the Woods, yeah. and Town on Fire. Also, are those? Those, those are a little more thriller suspense um, than horror. Uh, they are a series. They go in order one through three. Um, like I said, small town cops, small town in Oregon. Um, anything that can go wrong does go wrong. In the first one, the the town amusement park got shut down for the season. Now all of a sudden the lights are on and there's a group of assassins who are there playing and like hunt to the death game. And, the, and you know, the small town cops got to solve it and fix it. So the, the big joke with uh, a lot of writers, especially in your genre, mm -hmm. would be, you know, if, if the police come for me, you know, make sure my my search history <laughs> goes away. History. Yeah, right? right. So what's the weirdest thing in your browser history? <sighs> the very first one, I... I I looked up how to make a homemade electric chair. So yeah, it, it's actually it made it in the in the book. It's in the story, so it's a bit, actually a big part of the story. So yeah, that's probably the worst of it. Did you find out how? I did. All you need is a car battery and a couple of wires. You're good to go. <laughs> it's probably creepier than anything in your book. <laughs> well, I am a horror writer, so that fits right in. So how do you come up with the? I mean, do you find like you're, you're kind of you, you desensitizing yourself, and you I, need to come up with new ways to? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have any restrictions. I don't have barriers. I, I'm, I have no problem with anything. Blood doesn't bother me. Gory stuff doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, and I, I don't know. I just have that sick mind. You've you got to have a little bit of sickness in order to be a writer of any genre. You've right. got to be a little mentally ill to do that, to put yourself through that torture. But um, 
yeah, things just pop in my head at random times. Like, I, I probably have eight half-written books at home on my computer now, like most people do. You, you start it, and then it doesn't go where you want it to, so you stop. I, I don't know where they come from. Sometimes they just pop in your head. In the shower while you're sleeping, you know, they, you get these weird ideas, bad dreams. So on your on your journey from writing your first book to your latest, mm -hmm. how how has your writing process evolved? Um, when I started the very first one, I had no idea what I was doing. Now I can kind of outline better. I strategically place, you know, like for, foreshadowing a little better. Um, it's streamlined. I mean, like I said, I, I was on the road and I wrote literally the very first one. I wrote it as a short story and I with pen and paper. And I sent my wife pictures from, I think I was in Nebraska, I sent her pictures on my phone. She's like, it's really great, but your handwriting stinks. So that's when I got the tablet and we started there. And now, like, I just, if I got five minutes, I write. I work third shift, so I, a, lot, a lot of times I'm not working very hard. I write there at work. It's gotten a lot easier over the years, let's put it that way. Yeah. I have, I have a better clue of what I'm doing or, or what I want to accomplish. So you mentioned that you, you plot some things out. Do you consider yourself a pantser or a plotter? Oh, no, I'm a, I'm a complete pantser. I'm not a plotter. I'm, but, I, but I can, like, you know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll write, like, ten items, and I'll go, I want this to happen, this to happen. It's just more of a timeline as opposed to the whole plot. Like, I, I, don't, I never know where the story is going to go until it goes there. You don't know the end even? Not really. Okay. No, it, that's why I guess, this one has a real big twist in Grand Park. But other than that, I'm not a big twisty turny guy. Um, because I don't know where it's going to go. I can't foreshadow that far into the future to, to know how it's going to end. So what, what makes a good horror book? Is it is it like the gore? Is it the surprise? Is it the psychological kind of? Um, for me, it, it is psychological. It's it's how would I feel if I was in this situation, if I was trapped here or, or having to deal with these elements? How, you know, how would that affect me? Those are more realistic to me than, than, um, than in a lot of the other... Like I said, paranormal is not really my thing, but I think this this works. Um, you're not just hunting ghosts here. I mean, you're a, it, it gives a very real vibe of like an old abandoned hospital, like Waverly down in Louisville or whatever. Um, so I think for me, it's more realistic situations as opposed to uh, far-fetched, hard-to-believe horror. Like, I'm more of a realist. What kind of feedback do you get from people? They, they love it. I mean, I, I just, like I said, I'm very small time, very indie. Um, I do my own covers. I do. I, I don't. I, I don't advertise much. My twelve-year-old took over my social media, so my TikTok in the last week has blown up over five hundred followers. So, but overall, it's good. I mean, I, I get a lot of people come down here and they said, "You know, have, do you have anything new?" And for the first time in three years, I'm like, "Yes, I do. Yes, I do." So they they were happy to, to get it. Uh, overall, I mean, good feedback. Everybody's like, "You know, I can't believe you wrote a book." Other people are like, "You were so smart all the time. Why didn't you write this sooner?" You know, that's how my wife is. <laughs> When you yeah, tell her. Right. So uh, you said your 12 year old runs your TikTok, which is fantastic. Yes. That's a great way to do it. Um, did she put you in them or does she just. Oh, uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, it'll be pictures of me, it'll be pictures of the books, uh, things I've read. She's also started an Instagram page for me that I, I don't even have access to. I can't even log in and look at anything, but she's in complete charge of that. So That's she likes fantastic. it. She's, she's a, definitely a child of technology. She, she understands it better than I do. So what's your, uh, how can people find you on Instagram or uh, uh, TikTok? TikTok is uh, author underscore Kevin underscore M underscore Mooring. Um, TikTok or Instagram, I believe, is author Kevin Mooring, Kevin and Mooring on there. Facebook, Kevin and Mooring. Everything's Kevin and Mooring. So. All right. And where can people find you if they're uh, not here at the Cincinnati Expo and, uh, and they want to find some uh, good horror? Um, October 14th, I'll be at Cincinnati Book Rack on the east side. They do a signing event. Um, other than that, I do small craft fairs. All the books are available on Amazon, uh, Kindle, uh, Audible. You got a website? I do not. I do Facebook, basically. But okay. it, it's on the agenda. Um, but other than that, I mean, you can get some of them at Joseph Beth. And you do it, uh, where? Joseph Beth. It's a local bookstore. Okay. Like a, it's a bigger local bookstore. And you said you, you do have Audible? I do, yeah. Because uh, as a truck driver, that's how I read a lot. I listen to Audible almost exclusively sure. while I was driving. So it was very important for me to get books on Audible. Who does your, uh, who does your narrative? Uh, I, I auditioned, they auditioned, and I, I chose one. The guy who did the series did all three, and he, he was fabulous. I really, really liked him. So we're, the, the next work in progress is the fourth book of the series. So he's agreed to, to do that Audible as well. So that's good to keep that same voice for the whole series. Okay. 
So one last thing. Huh? Sanitarium just came out. Huh? What's next? What's next is the, is the fourth in the series, untitled yet. Uh, yeah, my wife's been begging for the fourth in the series for a long time. So I think she's going to get what she wants. Happy wife, happy life. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Excellent. Thank you.